So I tried to record this video probably a couple times. I wasn't sure how to start it. It's kind of awkward being on camera again. It's been about three years. Lots of stuff have happened. Uh, there's a reason why I left YouTube. I, I dropped out of uh, pretty much every social media uh, platform that there was. I'm gonna try to get back to where I left off to where I am right now. My last video was the CRV build video that I did. Uh, I know a lot of people have questions about that car specifically. If you guys look on my YouTube channel, I obviously started with the Z. The whole thing is, has been about drifting and me uh, building my Z and drifting my Z. Uh, but for some reason, I made the CRV build video I built that car for me, I didn't build it for the channel, uh, and that's why you see the whole build in just one video. Uh, but it blew up, and <laughs> a lot of people has been constantly hitting me up about parts on the car, what's on the car, where is the car. I was kind of bummed out because the other stuff was not getting attention, but the CRV was getting all the attention, but you know, it's the internet, so you can't really argue with that. Uh, but I'm glad that, you know, people really did appreciate the actual car. Anyways, so I made that, uh, that CRV video. And if you guys remember, uh, the car's, my Z's motor blew up. I ended up fixing it. And I thought that, you know, fixing the car would reignite my passion for cars, drifting cars, pretty much any motorsports related and it didn't uh, I enjoyed it for about a week and a half and the car just sat for almost a whole year after I fixed it at that time I was driving the CRV once I was done with the CRV about two months later I decided to post it up uh, on marketplace just to see if anybody would sell uh, buy it I got a ridiculous offer for it and you know it was like a no-brainer i can easily build another one it wasn't that hard to make it look uh the way it did so i ended up selling it to a couple that came out and you know they were super happy about the car you know i, I wasn't doing anything i just decided to focus on on working uh if you guys remember if you guys been on the channel for a while you guys know that i proposed to my fiance five years ago think so she gonna kill me if I get this wrong but anyways uh, <laughs> so and the whole plan was to save up so we can buy a house and you know move out and you know start a life together you know married everything was going right but eventually I got really tired of uh, my career I used to work in construction I was a sheet metal worker and I was there for probably about three to four years and I really did like it initially but then at the end I started getting really tired of just the routine of going to a project and then going to another project and I just it just felt like it wasn't for me uh, you know sometimes the projects will be really far away sometimes the projects will be really close by and I worked um, for a company uh, that sometimes you be you get prevailing wage and sometimes you didn't get prevailing wage so sometimes you'd be making really good money and sometimes you were not so I didn't like the the way that was so uh, my buddy Cody he's been in the auto glass industry for a long time and he put in a good word in for me at the company that he just had started so I started in that company and I was able to move up really fast. I think uh, in less than a year I was making top pay and I was really happy. Let's just say I was making good money every week. When I mean good money, I mean good money. And we were, our savings account just started racking up and we did not stop. You know, after a while we had quite a bit money saved up, we could have easily you know put a really good down payment on a house and then the worst happened so I tried my best to be the best at my job I was doing a lot of jobs 
for those who work in the auto glass industry, I was doing about eight to 10 jobs a day. Uh, on the summer days, it was, it was like that. At one point, um, I was working and one of my buddies actually, uh, he was working in the same company. We started doing a vehicle together. And for some reason, I leaned down to pick up, uh, pick up a tool that fell underneath the car when I was taking the windshield off. And I pretty much sat down on my leg uh, and I bent it sideways in a way that it should not be bent. And I tore my meniscus disc. I was in pain. I had to limp out of that job. I had to go home. I spent about two days thinking that it might be just something temporary. And I told my boss, my boss said, you know, go get checked out. They had to do surgery. And unfortunately the surgery had to be done two months after. I guess they were so booked that I can only get surgery in like two or three months. So I told my boss about that. You know, he said, all right, don't worry about it. Go and get surgery. And then when you, uh, you know, when you get better, you can come back and we'll be good. You know, I spent the three months, then I had surgery. And after a month and a half after surgery, uh, I was asking my boss if I can start working. This was a work-related injury and I, I never did anything because, you know, you sometimes when you get injured at work, sometimes when, I don't know if it's just me, but I try not to make a fuzz about certain things because I don't want, you know, my boss to look at me a certain way or, you know, think that I want, you know, uh, extra benefits or something like that. I don't know. But anyways, I never said anything. Everything was coming out of my pocket. The worst happened. I tried to contact him and he pretty much slapped me in the face with, yeah, you can come back, but I'm gonna pay you half of what you used to get paid. You know, I got really frustrated because, you know, I, I met this guy and he's a very religious Christian guy. He used to be in the Navy, you know, so he always comes across as a very respectable guy. Uh, anyways, it's not about him, honestly. I am actually glad that he did that uh, because I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Obviously, I had to walk through fire uh, just so I can be where I'm at. But I feel like God tested me and knew that I can definitely do this. So that's exactly what I did. Uh, but I just want to say that I am good. It messed with me physically. It messed with me mentally. I had no motivation to do pretty much anything. I just thought that I was stuck. I didn't know what to do. I, I think it's even harder when you don't have your family around. Uh, for those that know, I live here in Oregon and I live by myself with my fiance and her family. Not saying by myself, meaning as like, I have no family here in Oregon. Uh, my family live in another country and, or live in other states. But I do have my son, I do have my fiance. You know, God uh, has blessed me with great friends. I have my best friend, Cody, uh, and my uh, fiance's family that have been there all along through, through everything from day one. You know, after that happened, uh, I had a almost life and death situation. Uh, so I injured myself, uh, I got surgery, got fired from my, pretty much fired from my job without getting fired, but fired from my job. And then uh, something else that was even worse happened uh, when I was taking medication for the pain for my leg. It's like an ibuprofen on steroids pretty much. Uh, and then that day that they prescribed me that for the pain and at night, uh, I started puking blood and every time so it started with just a little bit of blood I didn't think it was that big of a deal and then I puked more blood uh, and then it was more red bright red and then I puked again and it was dark red and then my fiance got really scared and she called the paramedics and that day we had a snowstorm and cars couldn't even drive outside and but they still came and then when they seen me i started puking more and now the blood was kind of like chunky brown it kind of looked like 
like I was puking out my own liver. So I got really scared and then I started getting lightheaded. Uh, I got pale and then I really wanted to go to sleep. And then they were trying to keep me up so I wouldn't fall asleep. And I really thought I was gonna die. Uh, you know, when I seen the faces of uh, my fiance and my fiance's family, they really did look like, like they thought I was gone. Uh, so the paramedics rushed me into the hospital and they did everything that, you know, to see what was going on inside my stomach. Cause when you're puking blood, it usually means fatal. Uh, and turns out that it was that pill and it kind of like shredded my whole stomach lining. And that's what I was puking. So I'm good, nothing happened to me. I got really scared, but you know, there is no other feeling when you really think that you're gonna die. You're, like I wasn't even, I wasn't even scared. I was just kind of disappointed because I'm like, really, like now, like right now I'm gonna die. Like I didn't even get to see my son grow. Uh, you know, I didn't do the stuff that I wanted to do in life. And this is it, this is, you know, at that point I'm like, all right, just get it over and done with, you know? But luckily it did not happen. All of these experiences, my way, the way I see life now in general, I see it very different. So the CRV is gone. The 350Z is gone. When I sold the 350Z, it wasn't hard to sell it because I've done everything with that car. That car taught me everything that I know. Learn how to drift in that car. I learned uh, so much uh, on how to work on pretty much that whole chassis. So it wasn't that hard for me to let it go. I do miss it just because of what it what it turned out to be at the end. Uh, but I feel like, you know, if the car was gonna sit any longer, it, it was just, I didn't know when I was gonna get back into drifting. So I didn't wanna see it in my garage anymore. So I just decided to sell it. I'm back uh, and I have a new car that I wanna show you guys. So most likely on the next video that you guys see here on YouTube, uh, I'm gonna be showing you guys that car. Uh, I'm really excited. I don't know anything about these cars. Uh, it's gonna be something new. When I bought it and I drove it home, I did like it a lot, uh, but that's where I'm at. I just like it a lot. I have not wrenched on a car other than just taking some wheels off. Uh, I have not looked, uh, you know, anything up for these cars yet. I have done some research on certain things and they look a little complicated, I'm not gonna lie. We'll see. My, my goal is to try to fall in love with the car. So you guys are gonna see this with me here on YouTube. I'm excited to build it from, because I personally need a daily driven car right now. So, but anyways. Thank you guys uh, for stopping by and looking at this long ass video. Uh, sorry for making it that long. I mean, it's been about three years, so I have to explain a little bit, you know, where I've been. Uh, but I'm good. Thank you very much. Uh, and I will see you on the next video. The next video is going to be really nice uh, because you guys are going to see the new car. So stay tuned. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe if you want to. Uh, peace.